How do they do it? How do they do it without a conscious? How <clears throat> how do you uh, cultivate a taste for violence, an appetite for murder, without being a complete psychopath about it? Um, it, it requires real time management of your thoughts and your feelings, essentially meditation without the setup, without preparation on the flip of a switch, you've got to be able to shift to turn into a killer. Think like an assassin. Move with intent. My name is Alex. I'm a corporate cowboy. This is the Corporate Cowboys Podcast. Today happens to be Sunday. Our Father's Day. July 11th, 2021. Sunday. It's a, a holy day in most parts. But I felt like I should still reach out. Because um, we never rest. Is that how that saying goes? Evil never rests. So, why should good people get to take it easy? It ain't hard to imagine when you're first confronted with a situation or a circumstance that causes you to be uneasy or to grow uneasy. Well, it's that feeling. It's that that moment of arousal, that moment of stimulation, where it builds into fight or flight. You're only offered two choices. It's a fork, necessarily. You could either grow queasy from it and lose your stomach, or you could draw in another two or three breaths and just imagine it tastes sweet <laughs> imagine it's hearty and nutritious it takes training and you can do that on your own time but in real time in an active environment that has to be immediate that must be your response you can't flinch you can't falter you can't hesitate you pause you sit still stand still for one moment and you're the one on somebody else's plate Fuck all that. Don't slip. That's it. Just don't slip. You feel that feeling creeping up on you. Recognize that you might have stopped breathing. And little by little, your emotional state might be creeping into the red. Making you fearful making you want to fly away fuck all that as a corporate cowboy you want to commandeer take control not aggressively but assertively you have to remain calm 
You have to just look like you're chilling when really you want to take somebody's life away. And all that requires is you taking a breath. Taking a breath. And realizing that not everybody takes a breath when they need to. Not everyone is cognizant and manages their will to live as well as you might. I'm not saying you're the best. I'm definitely not saying I'm the best. There's always somebody bigger, always somebody badder. What I am saying is that we can be better. <laughs> and all that requires is you being aware of how well you manage stress of how well you manage pressure. Because in that moment, you aren't managing anyone else, even your opponent, just like your opponent can't manage you. Your opponent has to fend for themselves. You put yourself in this position, just like you put them in that position, whether or not they see it coming. You want to remain as cool, calm, collected, cold even, and calculating. Take a breath. Relax. Let the goosebumps flow over you. Let the shivers travel down your spine, down your arm, up your neck, wherever the fuck they need to go. Bask and that energy, knowing that they can't see what's taking place just beneath the surface of your skin, right behind your eyes. They can't tell if your heart rate is going up even if you are standing still. Now, I mean physically. You can stand still physically and not be noticed. You can be sitting down and look out of place. You try to be a gray man too hard and you will be noticed. You'll stick out as not belonging. And that all requires real time management. It's all rolled up into the hustle. First, walking into a room, what presentation do you want to give off? How do you want to be received? What do you want your person to be perceived as? Again, you're inside yourself, you're inside your mind. Your body is just a vehicle for your consciousness. Your body is just a tool for the reality you want to manifest. Those deep, dark thoughts you might keep and reserve for yourself might well be tangible should you choose to make it so. Otherwise, you're just happy. You appear happy. You're just chilling, copacetic, relaxing, very ambivalent, if you will. don't have to flit your eyes back and forth, not in a paranoid manner, but you do want to be aware and take a mental note. 
just about everything that's going on around you. Don't get locked up in the analysis. Don't get paralyzed by it. It has to be you making the effort to be present and at the same time not be imposing. It's like running rich or running lean. How much information you're willing to take in and underline, underscored, and process. You want a good balance. Otherwise, you're liable to take in a whole lot of information and not do anything with it. Might be paralysis by over-analysis. Or if you're running lean, you're not receiving a lot of information, and yet you find yourself spreading yourself thin. Don't do that either. Don't do that either. But we aren't machines, are we? No. We're humans. We're people. We have the capacity to expand and or develop our processing and how we manage to process our information doing so either more efficiently or more effectively or even upping that more efficaciously The goal, the underlying goal being to be better every day, better in every way. Because there's people out there who aren't taking days off. There's people out there who are striving to be the best. And even they will get knocked down. Don't work to be the best. The best is nominally relative at best. Be better. When I say the best is nominally relative, I mentioned before, there's always somebody bigger, always somebody badder. Faster, stronger. And you don't even have to go head to head with them. You have options. Think about your options. To either approach them in a yeah, mental capacity, mental interaction. I feel that's the best mode of approach. It's the best mode to live, to live by. <laughs> Develop your social skills, your conversation. How you think. And that's going to be different with a lot of people. You stick around with somebody too long. Make them a friend. And then when it's time to converse with somebody else, they might think you're two-faced. Why? Because you have a different way of being with somebody else. I don't think that's um, that's correct. All my friends, best friends, if you will, dropped off my radar years ago when I opted for the term associates. 
And now my associates recognize that I might be different people with different people. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Rephrase that shit. I might act differently with different people. But my values, my principles, my awareness, the logic I use, the tact I employ remains the same. Remains the same. Can't compromise my values, my principles. I can't compromise my associates. And so they recognize that in witnessing my interactions with other individuals. There's some who say, I'll talk to the wait staff, like I'll talk to the CEO, or I'll talk to the garbage man, like I would talk to the mayor. A dollar says that you would not. <laughs> A dollar says that there are subtleties that you might not even be cognizant of, you might not even acknowledge. Being better just means you acknowledge that, that you are cognizant and you recognize. Every person is a different world. And some people just live on different strata, on different vibes, reading different pages out of different books. Being socially competent means the ability to be diplomatic, to be an ambassador. Not just between people, but between yourself, between your own values, between your own principles, and someone else's. Running rich, running lean. Stick around long enough, and you'll see others running rich and running lean. That's when you can actualize and maximize your social ability, your social skills, and develop them, hone them to be professional capabilities. And that is, in a way, humanizing business, knowing what our the likes, the interests, the hopes, the fears of other individuals, of individuals and organizations. One could say it's similar to uh, a spy or a saboteur or a provocateur. It's none of that. You're not getting in to agitate. You're getting in to facilitate and to innovate. Even this podcast is a tool. Every episode that comes across is just the form of development for my toolbox. Whether or not you agree with it, we haven't met in person. You have no idea what I'm like. Every episode, I have to come up with a new title. And there are titles that I pull from the ether, from conversations with people, ideas that I acquire. I'm able to pull apart and flesh out. Might not even be my own. It's just shit I come across in corporate. Sometimes there are diamonds in the rough. Sometimes we find those pearls that were cast before swine. We can pull them out and polish them up. I 
I want to wish you all a great week. Find us on Instagram. That's incorporating dot associates underscore IA. You can subscribe to the Patreon. It's the Corporate Cowboys podcast. And um, you can donate. Find those links to uh, PayPal, Cash App, or Venmo. And keep this operation non-profit. Keep it uh, gray. <laughs> Take care of yourselves.